continuity is a, uh, I don't want to say a play on it. It's, it's a different form of the word continuous. Okay, we talked somewhat in pre-calculus about functions that are continuous and that are not continuous. So I don't necessarily want you to, I don't want you to write this down right here. I'm just going to talk through it. A simple definition of a function being continuous on an open interval is if its graph can be drawn with a pencil without lifting the pencil from the paper. So if you start on the left side of the function and you're drawing and you can draw all the way to the right side of the function without having to pick up your pencil, that's a simple definition of a continuous function. Okay. So what I want us to start with is I'm going to scroll down and I've got like four or five functions here. I want you to kind of split them up amongst your group members. And I want you to tell me um, which functions you think are continuous or not continuous and uh, why. Okay, so each of these, I've got four functions, each of them has an interval here for the x values. So for the first one, negative 3 and positive x. Negative 3 is your minimum for the x values, positive 3 is your maximum for the x values. I would leave the y values on negative. for your windows. And, all right, x squared plus 1. Continuous, not continuous? Continuous. Okay, it is continuous. It is a polynomial. If you do not remember from pre-calculus, all polynomials are continuous everywhere. Their domain is all real numbers. There are no issues, no holes, no vertical asymptotes, nothing like that. They are continuous. All right, how about b? Continuous, not continuous? Not continuous. That's also something you should be able to tell me from uh, pre-calculus. You should look at that and you should say there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Okay, that should be the first thing that pops in your mind. Without even looking at the graph, you should be able to tell me that. Okay, how about sine of x over x? It looks continuous. We've been dealing with this function quite a bit. What's the problem with sine of x over x? When do we have a problem? Why do we have to memorize this limit right here? Because when we plug in zero, we get zero, zero, there's a hole, okay? There's a hole at x equals zero. Uh, a lot of times you should, um, anytime you're talking about continuity, if there is a denominator, chances are there's going to be an issue with continuity somewhere there's going to be a hole, or there's going to be a vertical asymptote, usually. Not always, but typically. Okay? Uh, how about D? How about D? Does it look continuous? It looks continuous, but it's not. Okay? Because this, this is a rational function, right? With rational functions, we're used to like two curves, right? But Preston, what does the graph actually look like? Okay, you used your table to show that it wasn't continuous, but what did the graph look like? Did it look like a typical rational function yeah. graph? No, it looks like. No, it looks like a. It does? That one does? Do you put parentheses around the numerator and denominator? Oh, no, no. Okay, we're used to rational functions looking like this, right? Something like this. But this one doesn't look like that. When we graph it, if we put parentheses around the numerator and the denominator, uh, what does it actually look like? It looks like a line, doesn't it? Why on earth would it look like a line? We're expecting it to look like a rational function. What happens with this one? Factor. And what happens when you factor? A factor cancels. X plus 2 cancels in the numerator and the denominator. All we're left with is x minus 2. x minus 2 is a linear function. Okay? So this one looks continuous, but we have a hole at x equals negative 2. Preston said he looked at the table, saw that it was undefined, there was an error at x equals negative 2. That is a good method to use. All right? Um, but again, this is something that uh, we should be able to do really without even using our calculators. Okay? So, moral of the story, graphs can be deceiving, okay? Looks can be deceiving. Um, 
These two last functions look continuous, but they are not. There are issues. Yes. Is there any way to know the result of the inclusion of the equation? Yes. Yes. Rational functions. What do we always do with rational functions? We always factor. All right. We factor. Um, we end up with x plus 2 times x minus 2 over x plus 2. If factors cancel, that means we have a hole where the canceled factor equals 0. So that's how I found out there was a hole at negative 2 and its value. I plug it back into my simplified function. So it should be, the value should be at negative 2, negative 4 is where the hole is precisely located. There's so much to remember. There is a lot to remember from pre-calc. There is. But I will continue to remind you. I promise. How do you know if there's a Burke class in tow? The denominator equal to zero. Anything that causes the denominator to be zero. Yes. Now C is a hole at zero because the numerator also equals zero at zero. Um, that's why I see as a whole sure. instead of a vertical asymptote. So you said plug the uh huh. You said the denominator equals uh -huh. zero. We solve for x. So it's just two. So it's a positive two. It's a vertical asymptote positive two. So yep. does C have a vertical asymptote? No, it does not because when we simplify it, there's no more denominator. When we simplify it, we're just left with x minus two. Holes come first, then vertical asymptotes. Okay, good questions, any others? All right, so like I said, we should be getting used to automatically think of these things without looking at a calculator because that's their expectation, okay? These are going to be non-calculator problems. All right, so very, very, very important definition of continuity. I guarantee you there will be a question on the AP exam that in some shape or form uses the definition of continuity, okay? We just talked about a simple definition of continuity. This is the all-out calculus definition of continuity, okay? A uh, function is continuous at some point C if the following three conditions are met. All three conditions must be met. Number one, F of C must be defined. Okay, meaning, when you plug in that value, you get an answer out. There has to be a value at C. Okay, there has to be a value at C. Condition number two. The limit as you approach that C value exists, which requires your one-sided limits to be equal. So approaching it from the left side and approaching it from the right side got to be headed to the same uh, value. And then the third condition puts the first two together. Not only does your limit have to exist and your function have to be defined, they have to have the same value in order for the function to be continuous. In order for the function to be continuous, your limit has to have the same value as the function whatever point you're talking about. We can talk about functions being continuous on an interval if it's continuous on every point in that interval. That kind of makes sense. And then we have some functions that are continuous everywhere. Um, for example, polynomial functions are continuous everywhere. Jumps, you don't have any issues there. Uh, we call those functions everywhere continuous. Okay. It is very, very, very integral that you know this definition. Um, probably next week on those free response questions that I give you to do, uh, there will probably be one that asks you about continuity of a function at a justifying that answer, you must 
mention all three of those statements. You need to establish f of, f of whatever value equals this number. Statement number two, the limit as x approaches this value is this number. Statement number three, they are equal to each other, therefore the function is continuous. Okay? When they ask you to justify, they're usually asking you to use a definition, a theorem, something along those lines. And if it's continuity, you got to have three statements. you got to have three statements or um, pieces, so to speak, to that justification. And 